Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another GT7 car review. This time again covering one of the update 1.31 cars and perhaps the biggest meme car we've ever seen added within GT7 post launch. Of course I'm talking about the Toyota Alphard, obviously one of the most divisive vehicles I think I've ever seen added to GT7. You're either going to be in the category of hating it because it's absolutely ridiculous or you're going to embrace the meme and absolutely have a ton of fun with this vehicle. However, it is my job to be reviewing these vehicles and let's start with its price point coming in at a measly 75,000 credits. In terms of performance, you're looking at 296 brake horsepower with a four-wheel drive system and a weight of 2,210 kilogram. So it's pretty much like throwing a brick through the air and hoping it will go fast. So it's my job to review all the new cars as well as old cars in the game and we're going to go on to this thing here. Now if you've never actually joined me for a car review how we do it is essentially we take the stock version, throw it around the Nordschleife for a hot lap and see where it ranks on our lap time leaderboard. Then we fully modify it if possible and send it around the high speed ring to see where it places on our modified lap time leaderboard. And we basically just kind of test it and talk about it. Now obviously we are talking about the stock version first around the Nordschleife and in all honesty this was a much better vehicle than I thought it would be. In terms of its speed and performance that in terms of you know its overall power output and stuff it really isn't anything mind blowing. The fastest speed I actually got out of it was around about 125 miles an hour at the bottom of the straight actually going downhill. In terms of you know not getting a push downhill it was topping out around about 119 to 122 miles per hour so nothing really that mind blowing. However one thing that I was pleasantly surprised with was the handling of this vehicle and in fact the brakes whilst it is a very heavy vehicle it does feel like the brakes do a good job of slowing it down properly and going through the corners was actually quite a blast. In some of the tighter sections I kind of forgot I was driving a minivan and it felt like I was driving something much more capable. That four wheel drive system really does help this vehicle out and once you start stringing corners together you may actually be pleasantly surprised. Now I actually went into this vehicle thinking it would just be a complete meme or I'd absolutely hate it. But like I said, I was pleasantly surprised overall and I really cannot complain for the credits I put out. I went in expecting literally nothing but an absolute joke and came out actually really appreciating it for the way it handled those tighter sections. So it's definitely a vehicle, if you're going to use it in its standard form at least, where you want to be going on the tighter, smaller courses. Anything too big or too straight line and you really are going to struggle and probably not have the best of times. So overall, in its standard form, would I say it's worth the 75 Five thousand credits in all honesty yes you can do a lot lot worse for a lot lot more credits in terms of Gran Turismo 7 there is some cars out there that cost in excess of a million credits that are just absolutely downright terrible even if they are overall a faster vehicle and you're probably going to have a worse time driving them so that is it really for this standard review. There's not much I can say about it. It's an eight seater minivan. It's heavy. However, it does handle some of those tighter sections much like a smaller car. However, overall, it is not a speedy vehicle. So don't go into it expecting really kind of much of anything in terms of straight line performance in its standard form. So let's go ahead and see where it ranks on our Nordschleife leaderboard. So this vehicle falls in the 400pp category and it's going to actually come in second overall out of five vehicles we've tested, only being beaten by quite a little bit to be honest by the Mazda Roadster NRA ND 2022 model which is again another post launch vehicle. It's actually beaten the 2000 GTR from 1973 by around about a second or just over as well as beating the 2000 GTR from 1970 which has been there since launch by around about five seconds or so or just over so really quite surprising to be honest however it's very much helped by the four wheel drive. However, this is where the real fun with this thing begins. This is a fully modified example. Yes, it does have aero parts. Yes, you can lower it. And in fact, I actually found myself having a ton of fun with this vehicle. If you really want to experience the best with this vehicle, I recommend going and taking it drifting. This is where I had the most fun with the vehicle. And while still it's not overall very, very quick, it's a very, very good drift van. And it's quite a sight to behold. And overall, 
yes, it does live up to its meme status. It is ridiculous. It does look ridiculous. However, it's a ton of fun. So let's talk about its fully modified performance as we take it around the high speed ring in Asia. And in all honesty, it's actually not too bad. In terms of its top speed, you're going to be topping out anywhere from around about 150 to 170 miles an hour, depending on your gear ratio. This one here is just with the parts added on, and I was topping out around about, I believe, 155 on the straights. In reality, that is not too bad for a van with a bit of weight reduction and some performance parts. In all honesty, overall, it became a much, much more controllable vehicle. In fact, it became absolutely amazing through the tighter sections and really did give off some performance vibes. I was very pleasantly surprised, even more so than the standard version. This thing lowered closer to the ground and basically in a full race trim becomes a fantastic tight track car. And whilst its size may be off-putting to some, in all honesty, give it a whirl around some of these smaller, tighter tracks, and it really does come alive. It's a fantastic vehicle, as well as a fantastic drift vehicle. And in all honesty, with all its upgrades, it comes in around 300 to 400,000 credits and performs better than a lot of cars that actually put out those credits from standard. So overall, modified, this thing is a fantastic blaster drive. And in all honesty, I recommend if you're in the hater category of this vehicle, just give it a test drive and just have a little bit of fun with it. As you can see, I'm going to start pulling some four-wheel drive donuts here. And it's absolutely hilarious. It really does give off the vibe that this thing is massively maneuverable. So where does it come on our overall lap time leaderboard in terms of modified vehicles? It falls in the 600pp category and it comes overall 17th out of 20, beating the Ford Sierra RS500 Cosworth and a 911 Carrera RS from 1992 by around about a second or so, just over in fact. That is a very impressive time and in fact I think if I could have got more speed out of it by modifying the gear ratio in terms of its straight line speed it would have definitely jumped up a few places mainly making its time up through the corners. So overall is the Toyota Alpha just a complete meme or is it actually a usable vehicle and in all honesty I have to say it is a very usable vehicle and feels much better than you'd actually imagine. However if I had to recommend going for one version whether just the standard version or basically just going full wild and wacky and slapping all the upgrades on it i definitely recommend saying that you will get the upgraded version mainly because it is a much more fun vehicle than you can imagine so that's going to be it for today's video don't forget to like comment subscribe turn those notifications on so you don't miss an upload from me i upload gt7 and motorsport content each and every day for your viewing pleasure Big thank you to all my channel members and my sponsors, the Controller People and Poggers, for their continued support. They've been absolutely fantastic, as well as you guys that tune in each and every day. I do massively appreciate it. My Twitter, my Discord, and my donation link will be down in the description down below, so feel free to check those out. And I will see you all later on, guys. Have a great day. Peace.